Hello everyone. Today we will discuss what is fork join pool, how it works internally and a complete implementation example. So without any further delay, let's begin. A fork join pool in Java is a special type of executor service. It was introduced in Java 7 for enhancing the parallel programming. In this, there are mainly two operations. First is forking, which means dividing the task into multiple subtasks. Second operation is join. Once the forked tasks are executed, then in the end, the result of those will be joined back. It is mainly optimized for recursive task execution, where tasks can be split into smaller subtasks and then join the result of those subtasks in the end. Fork join pool uses a work stealing algorithm. In this, the idle threads steal tasks from other threads that are busy processing the other tasks. In this way, it maximizes the CPU utilization. Let's try to understand the working of work stealing algorithm with a very simple real world analogy. Suppose you are a teacher in a class and you got a big task to write a huge lengthy essay. Now you are very smart and immediately thought taking help from your class students. So what you do, you divide the whole essay into subsections and assign few subsections to every student in the class. Now every student started writing for the list of subsection given to them from top to bottom. Every student in your class is having different writing speeds. So some of the students might finish their list of subsection quickly while others were still writing. Those who finished quickly and become free, they started helping others slow student to finish their task quickly. So what they will do, they will try to pick up the subsections from the bottom of the list of other students and try to complete them. This is exactly how the work stealing algorithm work. In the fork join pool, if a thread becomes available after finishing its assigned tasks, then it steals the task from other busy threads queues. In this way, it helps in maximizing the CPU utilization and obviously improve the overall task performance of the system. Now, if you remember, this is our standard fixed thread pool, which picks the task from a common queue and execute them. Once the execution of that particular task is complete, the thread will remain idle in the pool until a new task is assigned to it. Now, the major difference between fork join pool and the previously discussed pool is in fork join pool, every thread will have their separate deck or double ended queue where the divided task will be placed. Let us say thread 1 was having 4 tasks and thread 2 is having 8 tasks. The tasks thread 1 is executing are not much time consuming. So in that case, thread 1 will become free by executing those 4 tasks quickly. On the other hand, the tasks which are executed by thread 2, let's say are time consuming. So it might still be executing second or third task only. Now, in case of fork join pool, the free thread, which was thread 1, will go and pick up the task from deck of thread 2 from the other end. This is known as work stealing, where thread which is free steal work from other threads deck. So, in this way, a proper CPU utilization can be done. Now, let us code the solution for our teacher student problem using fork join pool in Java. So here we have created a new class as a task. In this we have one threshold variable, an array to store the subtopic tasks and two pointers for start and end index. Now here we are using a parameterized constructor to set values of these instance variables. Now to use as a task class under fork join pool, it must extend recursive task class and override its compute method to provide how the task will be divided and joined back once those divided tasks are complete. Let me implement that as well and then we will have a detailed code walkthrough.
The compute method is the main heart of the recursive task class. It is an abstract method that you must override in your subclass. So here we have overridden this compute method and provided how the task will be divided and joined back. Consider it similar to the run method of runnable interface. As we write the logic inside run method, similarly here we have to write the logic to execute in compute method. Inside the compute method, you typically write the logic to solve the problem recursively and you return a result of the computation. And if you remember in the recursive problems, there is a very important point which is to define a base condition. For any recursive task, base condition is important otherwise the recursive operation will go into an infinite loop. So in compute method, we usually check for base case as a threshold condition. If the problem size is below a certain threshold, then we should perform direct computation and return the result. Like here at the start of compute method, we are checking the size of processing unit and if it is less than or equal to the threshold, then we process it. Now if the task size is more than the defined threshold, then it is time to apply divide and conquer approach, which we have defined in the else block. This is typically done by creating instance of a recursive task subclass. In this, each subtask is responsible for solving a smaller part of the problem. Like in this solution, we have this else block where subtasks are created. Here we divide the main task into two subtasks. One is left subtask, other one is right subtask. The left subtask will be responsible for processing the subsections from start till the mid. So before that we find what is the value of mid that will be uh, dividing all the task in two equal groups and the first group will be uh, taken care by the left task and the second group will be taken care by the right task. So after creating these two objects what we are doing we are calling the fork method. So we are calling fork method on both left task and right task. On calling the fork method on each subtask, it will submit these tasks to the fork join pool for asynchronous execution. This means that subtasks are added to the work queue and may be picked up by the idle worker threads for execution. So as we are seeing, it's an asynchronous execution. So how we will come to know that the tasks are complete and we need to join back the result. So for that, a simple join method call will be done. It's a kind of blocking call. So what it will do? Uh, left task dot join will block the operation here until the left task is complete and similar for the right task and when both the tasks are complete it will sum up the result and return the value so that will give us how many subtasks were completed now let us complete the demo with a main class implementation as well If you notice in the main method, we are creating an executor of folk join pool using common pool. It provides access to the common pool instance, which is a static shared pool available across the application. The common pool is typically created with the number of worker threads equal to the number of available processor cores. Now here I have defined the task size of 10. That means we have total 10 subtopics in our essay. Now let me run this with the input of 10 and see how common pool assign the worker threads based on logic written in our overridden compute method. So in this case as the task size was under threshold then it directly computed the result and returned it back. There was no forking of the task into the subtask due to this and you can notice that worker 1 thread from the common pool was responsible for execution of all those tasks. So this is the block where we have defined that if the size of the task is less than or equal to threshold then directly process that. Now let me increase the input to 20 and let us observe the output. Here 
Here you can see that the task was forked into subtasks and now both the subtasks were executed by different worker threads. Depending on the available worker thread, the task will be assigned. As we discussed earlier that the common pool is typically created with the number of worker threads equal to the number of available processor cores. So even if we increase the input to a very high value, we will still have a limited number of worker threads to execute unless we specify otherwise. Now let me increase the input size to 100. Then we will see how common pool will create maximum number of threads depending on the processor cores available in the system. Here you can see we only have three worker threads available. This number depends on the actual resources available on the server on which you are running the thread pool. In case we need more number of threads for processing, then we can create the folk join pool using constructor of folk join and there we can specify the level of parallelism. So here what we are doing, currently we are getting the executor from a common pool. But if we want a fixed number of threads for us for our uh, folk join pool, that also we can do. Now let me change the code to use that particular executor. Now here we have used the executor which will be using parallelism of 5. That means it will create 5 thread in the pool and execute the submitted task using those 5 threads only. Now let me execute the code and observe the output. So here you can see 5 worker threads were used to process our task as we have defined the parallelism value to 5. So let's just revisit uh, our compute implementation once again. So how we have implemented the uh, folk join pool. So here we have created a very simple class which is essay task. It has different instance variable. First one is threshold that defines our base value for our recursive tasks. Then we have an array which contains the subtasks or subtopics. And we have two other instance variables start and end which represents the start and end index. Then we have created a parameterized constructor uh, where we have initialized all these values. And in addition to that, we have extended the recursive task. So if we extend the recursive task, then we need to override its compute method. So compute method is the actual method where all the processing will be done for our folk join processing. So in this, what we are doing in the beginning itself, first we are checking what is the size of the task. If it is less than or equal to threshold, then we are processing it as it is. So in this case, we are not at all doing any fork and join operation. We are just doing a processing. And to just mimic the processing, I have created this processing method where I have defined a thread.sleep method with a variable time between 100 to 500 milliseconds. And after that, what we are doing, we are incrementing the finished subtopic because we need to uh, keep a track that how many subtasks are finished or subtopics are finished. And after that, we are also printing that this particular subsection was completed by which thread, which we are able to see in the output in this way. Now, after that, once this processing is done, then we are returning the number of finished subtopics so that we can uh, match it back that uh, how many tasks were assigned to the students and how many got completed. Now, in case the task size is more than threshold value, so in our case, threshold was 10 and suppose the task uh, size was 20 which we have also seen so in that case it will not directly do the processing what it will do now it will apply divide and conquer approach so in that what we are doing first we are identifying mid that means we are we are dividing the task into two equal portions and then we are creating two different object of sa task one is left task other one is right task left task will be responsible for processing the subtopics starting from zero to mid and the right task will be responsible for processing tasks starting from mid till the end. And after that, we are just calling left task dot fork and right task dot fork. What this call will do, it will submit these two tasks to the fork join pool for execution. And this execution will be asynchronous. That means 
the right task folk will not wait for the left task task folk to complete so these are just like uh, a asynchronous communication it will just submit the tasks so how we will come to know whether ta whether the tasks are complete because we need to return back the number of subtopics which are completed so to do that we can use the blocking call of join so on both left task dot join and right task dot join will block the call here and retrieve whatever values return once the tasks are complete and after that by adding these two values we are returning it back because that is the total number of subtasks completed so how we have created the client in this case so first we have used a common pool common pool is automatically created by the system or the folk join implementation what it will do it will create the number of threads depending on the resources available on the system mainly the number of core processor cores so this will create a common pool which will help in executing our task and to submit the task we have created an object of submit task there we have defined uh, the number of tasks this is the array which represents the number of tasks and we have passed start as zero and ending as the total length of this particular array and to execute this particular task we are using executor dot invoke so this invoke method expect uh, an object of folk join task and this recursive task is actually a kind of folk join task so if we open it we can see this recursive task is extending folk join task so the object of recursive task can be used here so this is how we have called it and what it will do first it will submit let's say it's a uh, size of the task is let's say 20 so in that case it will submit start 0 and 20 so if we go inside here uh, we can see in the compute method uh, 20 is the total size that is not actually less than threshold so it will directly go to the else block so what it will do uh, the first 10 task will be taken care by left task the 11 to 20 task will be taken care by right task and again it will again be submitted back to uh, the folk join pool and it will keep on dividing until it gets to the base condition and once the base condition is uh, satisfied then it will compute and return back the result and by doing so all the divided tasks they will combine together in the end and return the actual value so that was it for uh, the folk join pool I hope this video gave you a good understanding of folk join pool. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. If any of your friends or colleagues want to learn in depth regarding Java multithreading, then don't forget to share this playlist with them. In the next video, we will see some more functionality of Executor Framework. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope coding. Bye.